Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of John and Sungnam Lysowski? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. John Paul Lysowski was born on March 19, 1956, in Westfield, Massachusetts. He worked for a telecommunications equipment company and traveled around the world as part of his job. One time when he was in Seoul, South Korea, he met a woman named Sungnam Kwan. The couple married in 1983 and moved to Aurora, Illinois. They had a daughter named Victoria in 1988 and a daughter named Christine in 1990. John earned quite a bit of money with his job. The family lived in a large house on the 1400 block of Green Lake Drive. This was an upscale neighborhood. Due to the travel and relocation demands of John's work, the family spent a lot of time out of the country. They would rent their house when they were gone. The family lived in Australia and New Zealand. John was then transferred to Korea. In September 2001, they returned to the United States and rented an apartment until the rental contract on their house expired. They moved back into the house on Green Lake Drive when the tenants moved out. John started making many trips to China for work as his wife opened a gift and candy store in nearby Naperville. During this time, there were several incidents that alarmed John. His wife was acting erratically and was even violent on a few occasions. This drove the couple apart. I'll talk more about these incidents in the analysis. On September 5, 2002, when John was in China, he sent an email to Sung Nam stating that he had a new lover and wanted a divorce. In addition, John's intent was to relocate his daughters to China, where they would be raised by him and his mistress. Sung Nam did not take this divorce email too well. On November 1, she applied for an Illinois firearm owner's identification card. On December 17, she purchased a Colt Cobra 38 caliber revolver and picked it up on December 20, after the three-day waiting period. She went to a shooting range where she practiced firing the revolver. John returned to the United States right before Christmas. According to John's daughters, Victoria and Christine, Sung Nim's behavior was completely different. She was often ill-tempered, but now she was pretending to be happy and upbeat. They all went to dinner together at their mother's request, and then they played games as a family, which is something they never did. Their mother even prepared sodas and snacks for everyone. Victoria and Christine believed that their mother may have poisoned the sodas because they saw something white in the bottom of the glasses. They took small sips to avoid being poisoned, but their father, John, drank the entire soda. He became tired and went to bed. Victoria told him that she believed her mother was trying to kill him. Just before John fell asleep, he laughed and said, I hope not. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On the morning of December 25, 2002, Christmas Day, Victoria and Christine were in a bedroom on the second floor of the house. Just before 8 a.m., they heard a noise that was like a pot falling and slamming into the floor. Later, they would realize these were gunshots. After a few minutes, 41-year-old Sungnam appeared in the doorway of the bedroom holding the 38 caliber revolver. She explained how she was sorry and said it was time to die. She reloaded the revolver, pointed it at 14-year-old Victoria, and fired multiple times. After wounding Victoria, her mother started to reload the revolver again. 12-year-old Christine ran past her mother into another room and called 911. She told the operator that her mother was shooting them. Sungnam entered the room where Christine was on the phone with emergency services and fired the revolver. Christine ran by her mother and went back to the bedroom where Victoria was. Sungnam followed Christine and continued to fire. Christine realized that she had been shot. She had been hit three times and sustained wounds to her chest and arm. Her mother shot Victoria a few more times, bringing the total number of times she was hit to five. Victoria had been struck in the chest and hand. The girls managed to push their mother back and lock the bedroom door. 
they heard more gunshots and then a scream from their mother. As this was happening, police officers were in the front yard approaching the house. They heard the same gunshots. Victoria and Christine waved at them from the second floor bedroom, so the officers entered the house despite the act of shooting. The authorities found Sung Nam in another second floor bedroom. She had sustained two gunshot wounds to her chest. Both were self-inflicted. Amazingly, she was alive. 46-year-old John Lasowski was found dead on the first floor of his house. He had been sitting at a desk working when he was shot once in the back of the head and four times in the back. His wife confessed to being the shooter. She told the police that she killed her husband so that her husband's blank would not raise her daughters. The blank was an impolite word for sex worker that rhymes with door. She stated, we all must die. The three surviving family members were treated by medical professionals. They all recovered despite having serious wounds. Sung Nam was charged with first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder. Initially, she was found mentally unfit to stand trial, which led to a delay in the court proceedings. In October 2006, Sung Nam Lasowski pleaded guilty but mentally ill and received the minimum sentence of 45 years in prison. She was required to serve every day of the 45-year sentence, which meant that she would not be released until she was in her 80s. Years after being convicted, Sung Nam brought an end to her own life through a bedsheet-facilitated hanging. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Victoria and Christine gave interviews where they talked about their mother's disturbing behavior. Here are a few examples. Sung Nam would force Victoria to practice the piano at 6 a.m. She would hold a stick in her hands and strike Victoria if she made a mistake or slouched as she was playing. On one occasion when the sisters were arguing, their mother beat Christine with her fists and explained to Victoria how that is the expected outcome when a person does not take responsibility. During another incident, Sung Nam forced her daughters to stand in a garage with their hands in the air like prisoners. They were to remain there until their mother granted permission to come out. The sisters were terrified and stayed there for quite some time, but their mother never returned. When they finally worked up the courage to exit the garage, they found that their mother had left the house. One time when Victoria and Christine missed the bus, their mother drove them to school. She operated the vehicle in an erratic manner, jerked the wheel left and right, and weaved in and out of traffic. She refused to slow down and terrified her daughters. There was an incident where John had been cut on his cheek. It seemed clear that his wife was responsible, but he made an excuse, like he ran into a door. Sung Nam went through a phase where she was drinking large quantities of alcohol, going out with friends, and spending a lot of money. John confronted his wife about her behavior, only to have her start punching him. He grabbed her wrists, which caused Sung Nam to become even more angry. She could not believe John was trying to defend himself from her attack. She called the police and falsely accused John, but the police left after Victoria explained to them how her mother was the aggressor. During another domestic violence incident, John threatened to cancel his wife's credit card. She left the room and retrieved a knife. When she returned, she cut John on the cheek. He was crying and submissive. Eventually, his wife disengaged. Item number two. It appears as though John and his wife had some difficulty regulating their intake of alcohol. Both of them had been arrested for DUI at different times. Sung Nam started receiving mental health treatment in 1994. After the shooting in 2002, she was assessed by mental health professionals in jail. Sung Nam was depressed and had symptoms of delusions. She heard the voices of her husband and two daughters and believed that John was alive and had their daughters in China with his mistress. So her worst nightmare had come true. Clinicians said that Sung Nam also suffered from anxiety, body tremors, confusion, and poor concentration. As far as her personality, she was narcissistic, arrogant, and socially withdrawn. She attempted to bring an end to her own life on three occasions while she was in jail and would not interact with other inmates. Item number three. After being sentenced to prison, Sung Nam repeatedly sent letters to her daughters. Christine shared some of these letters during an interview. One letter congratulated Christine on graduating 
and wished her luck in her endless bright future. In another letter, her mother wrote, I hope your day holds more good things than you can count. Her mother never apologized, and the nature of the letters was disconnected. The content was pleasant and upbeat, as if the shooting never occurred. Item number four, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, in my opinion. Sungnam had several narcissistic and psychopathic characteristics. She was aggressive, impulsive, irresponsible, self-centered, grandiose, arrogant, condescending, sadistic, petty, dominant, callous, manipulative, overconfident, and had a tremendous sense of entitlement. John was the submissive one in the relationship, and his wife was able to get her way most of the time. He should have known that his wife was dangerous based on her level of violence toward him, but John may have been more afraid of living without a romantic partner. Some people just need to have a lover, even if that lover is toxic. It's also possible that John believed keeping his family together would cause less harm than leaving. For years, Sungnam mistreated all the family members, and they grew resentful toward her. To some extent, she lived vicariously through her daughters. Sung Nim would tell them how they were special and not like regular people. In her mind, her daughters became an extension of her identity. They were fused together. She was enmeshed with them, unable to think of her daughters as independent. Similarly, Sung Nim was unwilling to contemplate what life would be like without them. To her, this was not even a possibility. It was completely unacceptable and could never be tolerated. To lose her daughters would be the same as losing herself. When John found another lover in China, he now felt strong and bold. He was ready to stand up to his wife, but had not yet accumulated a significant quantity of courage for a traditional face-to-face -face conversation about divorce. He decided to announce his divorce intentions via email. John was probably in a state of euphoria because of the affair and did not appreciate the dangerous game he was playing with his wife. He thought he was simply going to walk out of his house after Christmas with his daughters. It's not clear why he believed there would not be some type of custody dispute. Maybe he thought that Sung Nim would be happy to see her daughters go. As soon as Sung Nim read the email, she decided that all was lost. Her rage consumed her, and she never looked back. She obtained the revolver and waited until Christmas morning to carry out her attack. The destruction of John represented the destruction of her own life as well. This was an all-or-nothing move for Sung Nam. She was enmeshed with her daughters and did not see them as individuals. Therefore, they needed to suffer the same fate as her. They were all tied together. She wanted the entire family to pay for the perceived betrayal. Such was the nature of her sense of entitlement grandiosity, and vindictiveness that no one could be left alive. If Sung Nam was going to suffer, everyone would suffer with her. Killing John was easy because she approached him from behind, but Sung Nam had a more difficult time dealing with her daughters. They courageously fought her for their lives and were successful. After going to prison, Sung Nam had mental health symptoms because her level of narcissism was struggling to protect her ego. She was not delusional, she was in denial. It was impossible for her to face her own cowardly and destructive behavior. This is why she sent the cheerful letters to her daughters. Sung Nam was pretending to be someone supportive and compassionate. During court proceedings, Sung Nam tried to blame Jean, claiming that he had attacked her with a knife, but ultimately she accepted responsibility. After the death of their mother, Victoria expressed sadness and Christine expressed relief. This is a testament to just how dysfunctional, hostile, and cruel their mother was. Now moving to my final thoughts. Some people struggle to understand John's behavior in this case. Why did he ignore clear warning signs? As I mentioned, Sung Nim had many narcissistic characteristics. Narcissists often use the blind spots of their adversaries to carry out nefarious plans. John was an intelligent, productive, and compassionate father, but he also had his own problems. His alcohol use and infidelity created the darkness in which his wife concealed her lethal approach. John underestimated his opponent because he failed to appreciate that she was his opponent in the first place. The haunting whispers of his wife's intent were more than distant echoes. 
they were reasonably foreseeable declarations of violence based on her pattern of selfishness. When living with a narcissist, being distracted comes with a high cost. Sometimes the price is everything. Those are my thoughts in the case of John and Sugnum Lysowski. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.